Okay, switch topics with me for a second. You you mentioned Ali earlier in the conversation, and I had a chance to look at a, a interview that he did. And in one part, I was super inspired. In another part, you know, my heart kind of went out, you know, to him. I I guess I didn't realize the, to the magnitude of that he played in putting together the Saint Lunatics and the success of you guys and Nelly. This guy really was like the RZA, like what RZA was to the Wu Tang, he was to the Saint Lunatics. Correct? Uh, yeah. Now that I watched the movie, exactly. Exactly. I think he had that much care in it to form something to that he saw the future of, you know what I'm saying? Because it ain't like we, he knew from the jump that oh, he was the tightest, he the tight. It ain't like he went and grabbed the tightest people on earth. You know what I'm saying? He grabbed his best friend's nephews who was right there. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, and, and not only that, that we rapped, but it was just that fact. You know what I'm saying? And actually, we didn't rap rap before we decided to be a rap group. We didn't rap that much. It wasn't like it was a life of rapping. It was a life of getting girls and, you know what I'm saying, doing wrong a little bit, going to school before that. It wasn't that. It was sports. It wasn't everyday rapping. And then like, oh, man, we tight. We should form a group. It wasn't like that. It was like he came back from wherever he was at and he wanted to start some stuff. And they all did. Three more heads. It's Tony Davis. That's the man. This the management group. Tony, three called him three more heads. Tony Davis, Keith Brent, and Ali Jones. And them three wanted to start something. You know what I'm saying? Because it was a company called Bulletproof Records on the other side of town that was um had their own record label doing their thing and it, it motivated them to want to do something in that nature. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, when, when I sat down and I watched his interview, he was saying how, I think he relocated to Atlanta early in the 90s. And he was- nah, he, he, he went to school. He went to Clark. Oh, Ali went to Clark? Yeah, he went to Clark. Oh, you okay, know? now it makes sense. Okay, because- Yeah, he went to, is it Clark? I think it's Clark, yeah. He went, because he hooped, Clark. Ali hooped. Ali was a, one of the top hoopers in St. Louis. So he okay. went. He, he went on. He went to school to hoop. I don't think he ended up hooping, but he he went to school to you know because he was in that world. Okay, make okay, make perfect sense now. And then See, he got into to the mute. He got into the music heavy when he moved here. Saw the whole freak Nick scene, the whole scene, and made him be like, "Oh no, this is what we need to do. We can do it. We definitely can do this in the loop." And, and that's what he was saying. He was like, yo, at that time he was watching Jermaine Dupree and um, how he had um, Chris Cross. Everybody was jumping. He was talking about how he had, um, you know, just saw what Outkast was doing. But he was like, their success, because if you remember back in them days, New York owned it. And then LA came and they put their twist and they was doing their thing. And he was like, yo, the reason that Atlanta was able to break out and become the powerhouse that it's become is because they really owned Atlanta swag. They alone, they owned Atlanta style. They, they wasn't trying to emulate anybody else. They was from the South. They was using their lingo, their slang, the way that they move, and they was putting it out there loud and proud. And he was like, yo, when I went back to St. Louis, I was like, yo, we could just recreate the same thing that they got going on in Atlanta, but for the Midwest. We 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 got our own slang. We move a certain way. So he was like, yo, we immediately just started to look to put together a group. And you know, he just to your point, yo, I just called on my friends. And and here's one thing that really stuck out. He was like, yo, I didn't I didn't want nobody talking about gangbanging. Nobody cussing, nobody portraying negative images. And he was like, a lot of people just fell off. And the five that stayed became the St. Lunatics. Is that the way you remember it? Yeah, there was a lot of us in there. It was at least about nine to 10 people trying to rap. And it ended up being, by the end of the night, it ended up being five. 
and that was skill. That was just writing wise, like putting something on paper wise. And then the next step was, cause it really was like six of us or something like that. But the next step was to um, try to cut out certain words, try to cut out certain things. Like, especially if you was doing it right now, you know what I'm saying? So if you selling dope right now, try not to talk about selling dope. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's not sell dope. Or if we getting girls, why are we talking about killing and dealing? When we some girl getters or we partiers or we, um, you know what I'm saying? Or if we dope dealers, why aren't we just talking about selling dope instead of talking about other things? You know what I'm saying? Whatever you're doing, talk about it. Let's, let's keep it a honey. And let, and then, you know what I'm saying? I used to pat our pockets and all that. Like, where them guns that y'all be talking about in them raps? Because you get the name and all type of guns because you hear Spice One or you hear other root rappers and groups and you think that's how it's supposed to be. But in actuality, um, try to stay in your lane, lane somehow, somehow. some way. You know, find you a lane. So let me ask you, I know he's a little older than everybody in the group. Was he just like that wise older brother, OG, from the crew? Because most no, he just knew how to do it. Say it again? He just knew how to do it. Like He knew what he was doing because he can, he can rap rap. Ali Cole. I don't want to hear all this. They be saying all this the best out the group shit. You know what I'm saying? But Ali Cole, like Cole Cole. He's just older now. You know what I'm saying? He cold, though. Like, cold. Any any ram of you, how you want it. What you want? You want a party song? What, any ram of what you want, he cold. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking about, like, lyricist-wise, like, top five on earth. He cold, cold with words. You know what I'm saying? He literally can hold back on things to make it fit a song you know what i'm saying he know what he's doing but if you go back and listen to everything you can hear him now as a grown person like he said that that's what that meant you know what i'm saying like i go back right now to lunatic album free city and listen to it and be like whoa you know what i'm saying like that's what that meant. i didn't even know what that meant at 20 i don't <laughs> know what that you know what i'm saying like now i see clearly and that's what we was talking to our, our demographic was high schoolers and college students and people in their 20s, you know what I'm saying? So, and he talking for 40 year olds, but he 28, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't like he he 40, he 28 with just mature thoughts and just a mind, man, he got a big ass head, man. He, he be your, <laughs> it's your Gotti and Ali, man. Both of them is the same humans on earth. Both of them could do that. He could do, he could be doing with your, he can be running a label. Right now, one of them labels, universe, somebody need to, they, they missing out. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.